Hey, welcome back, everybody. Here we go. Uh, today we're continuing on with the Identity Series, Part 3. All right, got to get ready for wrestling season. As now it's a three-point takedown. Wisconsin WI rules changed. Anyway, I digress. Too many things going on in my mind. Um, identity Part 3. This sermon is entitled Cigarette. Uh, it kind of seems like it's way out in left field because it is. It's how my mind operates. But anyway, we are continuing on in Romans chapter 8. And as you listen to these, they all kind of seem redundant. Well, if you read Romans chapter 8, Paul realizes he's talking to people and they need to hear the same thing over and over and over to get it. So I'm doing the same thing that Paul did. Now, week one in the identity series was about who we are to God. And we start at the bottom, verse 31 through 39. Eight verses at the bottom of chapter eight and how he looks at us and loves us unconditionally. In that sermon, I use the pressure washer analogy. Week two was about who we are on the inside and that sinful nature that lives inside of us. And here now today, we're going into week three and it's kind of an extension off of that nature. We saw in week two that our sinful nature is hostile to God and what we think upon on the inside becomes our actions. And I finished up the last sermon with, if you don't know what kind of nature you have in you, look at your actions to the people around you. If they're selfish, well, you've got a sinful nature. If they're selfless uh, and you're actively trying to live for Christ, well, then you'll see that. And our thoughts must change so that on the outside, our actions change. Now, before I read this week's scripture, um, I want to challenge you to sit down and read the book of Romans. I highly encourage just start in chapter eight, start in the middle. All right. It'll get your mind kind of, wait a minute, what I hear, what I read, just read chapter eight, and then you'll want to see everything that's going on. Um, so I encourage you with that. Make it a priority to read your Bible this week. If you know me personally, or you have any trust in me whatsoever, trust me that I'm telling you, read the word of God. I can preach and preach and preach and preach and preach, but I'm not telling you anything that Paul hasn't said, and he says it a lot better. So read your Bible. God put the book together. He knows what he's talking about. But let's get into Scripture. So this is verse 9. It says, But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit, if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember, those that do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them no longer belong to Him at all. This is a promise and a warning. Like, um, this starting off, now that we're in verse 9, like, hey, remember, kind of like in verse 1 where it says, hey, there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. We get down to the bottom, to verse 31. It's reminding us, uh, you know, that we are more than conquerors. And here in verse 9, it says, hey, you're not controlled by that sinful nature anymore. That is, if you have the Spirit of God in you. And those first verses say some powerful things. They say what you are or what you are not. Now, this scripture should give you hope. It could scare you a little bit, though. Because if you still are holding on to that sinful nature, then you should be scared of what's to come. But if you are giving your life to Christ... And your inward thoughts are on the Spirit of God living in you? Well, then this should give you hope. Because verse 10 and 11 says this way. It says, and Christ lives in you. So think about this. If you have the Spirit of Christ in you. And Christ lives within you. So that even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life. Because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead. Think about that. That same spirit that lives in you. The spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised the spirit of Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living in you. Chew on that. This is why I tell you, you got to get in your Bibles. Open up Romans chapter 8. Highlight that up. Verse 10 and 11. This scripture should define who you are and your actions. This should be an identity scripture. If you truly have Jesus Christ inside of you, if his spirit is living in you, well, then that means that you have life. 
That means every single time you think about death, it's not a bad thing. It's a joyous occasion because then you will be reunited with Christ and you will have life. The same powerful spirit that raised Jesus Christ back to life now lives inside of you. That is, of course, if you've accepted Christ. If you haven't, um, well, then it's not good. You have a promise of what is in, assured in your future. And now in this temporary life that you and I are living, well, we have an eternal mindset because if we know that when we die, we are resurrected with Christ through his power, that same spirit, well, then this life should have eternal thinking. A temporary life should have eternal mindset. That also means that if Christ is inside of you, then your thoughts are like Christ. I keep saying this over and over again. And what happens to our thoughts on the inside become actions on the outside. So who lives in you? Who's your identity in? Verse 12 and 13, Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. So just because we have Christ in us doesn't mean that we don't still have that sinful nature. I use the analogy, I am a married man. I've got a ton of years of marriage in. I was going to say, but I was afraid I might get it wrong. I think it's 18. I don't know. Luckily, my wife hardly ever watches this. But anyway, I have been married for a long time. Love my wife. Beautiful woman. Still rocks my world. But you know what? Sinful nature still has desires for my eyes to wander. So I have to block that. The nature is there, but I no longer have any obligation to allow my eyes to wander stops it has to stop because if it doesn't verse 13 says for if you live by it the sinful nature for if you live by its dictates you're going to die but if through the power of the spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature you'll live that sinful nature that was once in me has to die If Christ lives in you, there's no obligation to allow for a second look. People that struggle with addiction, if Christ lives in you, there's no obligation to pour another drink. Those that scroll through their phone and have stuff that they would be embarrassed if people saw it, there's no obligation to click on those links. That life in you has to die. The power of the Holy Spirit that gave Christ the words to say it is finished on the cross needs to be in you. And that old lifestyle is finished. It's done. It's over. Your spirit inside you is now changed. Verse 14 and 15. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. You've got to catch this. A lot of people always say, I'm a child of God. Well, are you led by the Spirit of God? Because that's how you become a child of God. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, received God's Spirit when He adopted you as His own children. Now we call Him Abba, Father. For His Spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. This goes back to that sermon when he embraces us. That's that righteousness, his righteousness put on us. We're adopted into it to become heirs of his glory. But if we are to share his glory, well, then we must also share suffering. Before I go on with my sermon, this is a call for you to get into a church somewhere. Um, you're not going to hear the suffering part of this because Adam Bartles preached on it, did an amazing job. He goes into much detail about if we're with Christ, we should expect to suffer. But as I continue on with my sermon here, my question now becomes, who is your father? Because you're going to act like him. See, I got a son. I, I got a pile full of kids. Uh, but my oldest boy, um, he's going to be 17 in December of 24, depending on when you watch this. And as I look at him, he's me. Um, 
he's got a lot of the dumb things that I used to do. He's impulsive. That's me. Uh, he's got a bit of a hothead temper. That's me. Um, you wouldn't believe it from this angle, but he's quite fit. That used to be me. Okay. Time changes everything. But as we read through in this verse 17 is, I've already said, if we're his children and we're his heirs. So the question is, who is your father? Because the spirit that's inside of you, if it's the Holy Spirit, then God is your father and you're going to act like him. But if that spirit of, uh, I'm sorry, if that sinful nature is inside of you, well, then you're going to be rebellious and you're going to reject God just like Satan. Just like when Jesus called out the Pharisees and Sadducees and said, who is your father? Who's your identity in? Is it in Christ? Or is it in yourself, in your own sinful nature? Now, I'm almost done with this sermon, and the sermon is entitled Cigarette. And I haven't even mentioned it yet as to why. Well, I came up with a name for the sermon, which is way out in left field, because I was watching, scrolling through Facebook, and a reel came through, and it was Tony Robbins, and I'm not, you know, promoting or anything either way here. But I saw it, and Tony Robbins was having an interview with a guy, and I'm giving credit where credit's due. Tony asked this guy, he said, uh, hey, um, do you want a cigarette? And Tony knew that this other guy used to smoke cigarettes. And the guy immediately responded and said, no, nah, I quit. And then Tony went on. He's like, well, you know, when you used to smoke, you, you probably would have said yes or ask at least what kind and then taken it or maybe rejected it because it was a kind you didn't smoke. But now that you're not a smoker, your answer immediately is no. Now that you've quit, the yes isn't an option. The answer is just no. Do you see the correlation with where I'm going and what Paul has to say in Romans chapter 8? In this little two guys talking, this dude's identity was in a smoker. He would say yes, but now he quit, so his answer is no. So my question to you is, who's your identity in? If you're with Christ, then when you have that sinful obligation and that urge, guess what the answer has to be? No. Don't let it simmer. Don't start thinking, well, maybe one. Don't allow yourself to give in to that temptation. You're either for Christ or you're not. Only one spirit can live inside of you. Your thoughts must be like Christ, so your answers and response, responses must be like Christ. That old sinful nature, that's dead. And it has to stay dead. Someone who's quit smoking, their answer is no. If you have quit living for this world and now you're living for Christ, well then when sin crouches at your door and that nature starts to fester and come back inside, you just have to say, no, I'm done. I quit. Challenge you with this. Quit. I challenge you to quit. Quit that sinful nature and start living for Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for what your word teaches us. We thank you for Paul and his letters repeating it over and over and over and over that, man, we have a nature inside of us that's either a selfish, it's either a selfish, sinful nature or a selfless nature of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for whoever is watching this that their identity will be in you, in Christ Jesus. And because they identify as a follower of Christ, well, then they'll flee from sin. And whatever your book calls a sin, regardless what the world may say, then they're going to say, yeah, that's a sin, because that's what God says. And they run from it. Lord, we ask all of this in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Don't forget.
give each other a little grace. Hey, thanks a lot for taking the time to watch this video and uh, listen to the sermon. Um, but check what I'm saying. Get into your Bible, read the scripture that I preached on today for yourself, and uh, make sure that you're holding me accountable as I try to hold you accountable through this lens. Get into the Word of God, see what He has to say with you, to you this week. And don't forget, give each other a little grace. See ya.